Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode I'm going to have a look at a few things I didn't do last episode. And maybe if we got time to have a look at a few beads as well. So let's start with that. So as you can see winter has, we're actually in winter. In fact it's just coming to the end of the winter now so hopefully all this snow will melt. But what I noticed is that I had a cable running from here to this uh, transformer here. Uh, LV and it's obviously got knocked off by the snow. <laughs> Brilliant. Huh? So, snow will also knock cables off. So, what I've got to do is wait. I don't need these pipes on here anymore. In fact, that was a new thing I put down. Because what I did is I put down this is MV coming into this transformer, and then we can take out of here some low voltage across to the um, pump jack because the pump jack needs low voltage. So, let's remove these pipes for all. And then we can get rid of the snow at the same time. Like that and that snow should then disappear so we can reconnect this up again of course i've lost the cable as is uh, normally the case so when it one of these drops off it just it, oh maybe i haven't maybe i was lucky they usually quite often despawn when, when they drop off so that's a bit of a problem so i have to use this relay here like this and i can connect this relay onto this transformer and as you can see it just the pipe must have been about here it sort of so, no, it's, oh, it's disappearing as you move around. I think, yes, those, as you see, you get to that point now and these two just disappear. Very strange. So, on the other side of this, it's actually turned off at the moment. Because these barrels here are all full. Let's look at what I've got in this one. So this has got diesel in it, this one's got lubricant in it, and this one has got gasoline in it. And if we look here, what I've put in here is a fluid router. So on a fluid router we can specify what we want to go on each face of the fluid router. So in our case, everything's coming in from the bottom and then it's going out in those four locations. I've also put a chest down here to catch the uh, bitumen that's coming out of here. And we've got use for the bitumen. It makes basically, um, well, 12 of these because we've got plenty of slag. We'll make uh, asphalt concrete. And I'm not sure whether asphalt concrete makes you go faster. We'll have to check that out as well at some stage. Not today, probably. Um, I've also got to be very careful from the, from the high voltages. I was walking around and got clubbered by that again. So this is also turned off. Um, as you can see, that says on. So it's normally on means off in immersive engineering. We're going to turn that back on again. And we should be able to turn the pump on again. And it should run at a decent speed now. Because uh, it's getting the power from the uh, trans from the suppliers below. In fact, it's funny, it's going up and down into the snow there. <laughs> so I've been walking around here, got too close to this transformer. You get close to that transformer, like one block away, it zaps you and you lose about six hearts, I felt. So let's go down here. What I want to do down here is I want to make some uh, pollution. <laughs> what I need to do to make some pollution is to take these out of here like this. Um, and put into this the some coke dust and some iron and this be, as soon as that starts to use up this will not run until we get some power into it of course because this is going directly from the generator so let's turn the generator on and let's go and have a look outside so at the moment there's no pollution i can see inside here and there's no pollution inside here so let's go and have a look outside keep myself away from that thing and but here there's going to be plenty of pollution as I, as I change the configuration files uh, as you can see so what's happening here is this will make these grow but unfortunately I've run out of uh, fertilizer so let's get rid of let's get the fertilizer going there might be the odd block coming through here as well which will uh, should give these trees a little bit of a boost and I'm not sure whether Pam Harvest Craft does actually work at winter time I haven't seen anything so let's go down back inside and change that to give it some fertilizer and you can watch the stuff coming in but i should have done that start to start off with let's just stop it because you'll see the, the rate of stuff coming in here is incredible let's just turn that off for a second let's go over to the um the farms which i made a little pathway down here comes out into the farms see nothing's coming in here out of these at the moment so let's just get some fertilizer. I think it's in one of these chests. Here we go. 
Let's take the two sets of fertilizer. Let's fill up this farm. It had 38 in yesterday, so we've got 37 in now. And oh, that's convenient. We'll probably have 63 in here like this. And as soon as you put this one into here, it'll start. Oh, 54 miscounted. It'll soon use these up, and you will see coming out of here now a lot of stuff. As soon as the as soon as the farm starts to work. I don't actually need that much stuff from the farm because I think the two um, storage drawers are probably full. <laughs> but as a demonstration, I don't mind running it. That was on. That wasn't on today. That wasn't on last time, was it? Now it's on. I don't know what's going on with this mod. It's a bit strange at times because now it says FF. Last time I looked at these were both zeros and I haven't touched anything. So it must be an initialization thing. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Let's go up here. I can get up here, I think, and have a look at this. So I've got 107,000 in there, yep. Yeah. And 48.5k in that one. And 6,000 apples, which isn't so many apples. But you can see this is coming through at a fairly decent rate now. I'm not sure what's happening to the seeds. They may be going back into. No, they shouldn't be going back actually. They should be coming through here. So let's turn the generator back on again and get this stuff making some more pollution for us. And you can see this has now basically been farmed out. As you can see, everything is should be grown and these should get uh, also been processed. They haven't been yet. I'm not quite sure why, maybe it's just a time thing. And in here we should get some pollution coming. I want to just see a block coming through here. Let's see if it does actually what it does to these trees. As far as I know, it doesn't do anything. Ah, that was a sulfur block. I just saw a sulfur block come out of that then and come out through these. If the sulfur blocks do come out, then, then it'll wipe everything out for a long time. Yes, there we go. So now the pollution is going right up there. Unfortunately, the clouds are in the way. You can't see it. But you can see this uh, uh, a large stack of pollution going up here. And it sometimes blocks a bit. Hopefully it doesn't block back and blow up the, um, the generator. Oh, there's, uh, there's one that actually went to the side of that one. It must have just moved out of the way. But as you can see, it does really... Now it's blocking in here, look. And hopefully those will move out of the way and go up. I think there's actually too much pollution being generated by the uh, generator as it happens. But it's night time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a quick sleep, as you know. Night time's a good time to go for sleep in this mod pack. But uh, what I did is I got killed by a zombie once. And how I got killed by a zombie is I was busy doing bee breeding and looking very much at the portable analyzer. I forgot what time it was. And so I built a gun. <laughs> so let's have a quick sleep and at that as well so if, if there was anything coming around this gun should actually turn on and shoot something I haven't, I haven't used it yet as far as I know it's still full of 25 silver bullets which are good for the mobs so it's blacklisting animals players and neutrals which is fine don't mind that at all and what I was doing here was just breeding the tipsy bee so I think in here we've got some tipsy bees yes it's a noble stock so I can put this back in here. In fact, if I look at one of these, let's take that out, I'll just analyse one of these to start with. It's got it's a short life, slower production, which is actually not great. It's got average uh, territory, and it's got this drunkard thing, of course. You can guess what drunkard does, can't you? It, makes you, it gives you nausea. So it's allowed to go up one, and it's both humidities, and it works day and night. Basically, so it's a pretty good, pretty decent bee. This one, so we can actually take that now and put that into here. I'm sure, one it was. I think it's nope. This one, nope. It was princess. Yes, it's this one. So it stopped halfway, didn't it? So we can fill, put those back in again, and it'll carry on. And this one here was slightly different. This has actually got two offspring, as you can see. Again, it's a global stock. Let's have a look, analyze this one. Um, so it's tipsy normal everything else is the same as far as I can see I think it's slow snow is a pollination type I think might, and, but here we've got uh, the same again both at one 
And the only difference between this one and the other one is this has got two offspring. Let's put this one, and you need to take these out of here, of course, and then push that one in, because you can't put it in once the, um, um, and you can see the, the effect is actually happening here. Uh, it's not affecting me until I take off my, oh, I actually am. It should it should affect me if I take off this. Let's take off the the uniform, and we get uh, the drunkard effect coming on, which is, uh, there you go. <laughs> so we've got nausea for four seconds, and it's horrible. <laughs> so of course you just put the coat, but just put the uniform back on again, and then we're safe. We don't get any effects from those at all. So all the negative effects are uh, removed from this. This is the same as the previous one, I think. Let's just check it actually. I think this is the same. Nope, it's not the same. So I'll cut one of these bees. If I remember rightly, this was um, this is flowers. Yes, this is flowers as opposed to snow, and everything else should be the same. It is yes, and of course it produces both uh, the two wheat type, this snow and the other one, these two ice shards and frozen combs. Now I've got this one on it. Let's put it in here because I can't do anything else with it for the time being. But when you're doing the selective breeding on bees, it's actually quite good fun. It's a bit easy. It's a lot more fun than doing um, gender history because that's basically just um, going through and getting the bees and just taking the genes out. And you end up with some strange ones. So, for example, here are common. That's nothing. These are just straightforward commons. I think these are commons with three offspring as opposed to two but these two here let's go this one um i want to analyze one of these drones because the queen's the same so it doesn't make any difference they've got drunkard ability on these on these frozen ones as well on these uh winter bees which is uh unusual plus i've got here both in two directions so we can actually breed those use these bees back at the base as standard winter bees it's great isn't it that, that was in this one wasn't it so let's remove these 16 they go onto that yeah, that and just slip these into that like that and then once that one's been made a princess i could push these back in again like that it says no flowers but that's just always the case to start with and the same with this one i think it was exactly the same bees on that one and the last one there's nothing in it this one here has got a different offspring on this one and it's um it's got four four offsprings from this particular bee. So there's actually quite a lot that goes on. As you can see, we get a reasonable amount of ice shards from that and uh, frozen combs, even though it's in a, an apiary as opposed to an alvary. So let's kind of look at the alvary next. And as you, see, as you can see, I've got, uh, I was working pretty hard to get these tipsy bees. I can tell you that it was five, nearly five pages of those. And the lifespan on those is short life. So that basically means 15 minutes, I think, <laughs> per generation. These ones are also, these are the winter bees I was using to, to make everything. So the wintery plus the meadows produce the tipsy just after Christmas or before during the new year. And uh, I haven't got it here, but the winter plus the forest produce the merry bee, which we've already, which I haven't shown yet. And then they've got the common bees in here, which were from that breeding session. And then they've got some exotic drones and some austere drones because the recipe for these so look at the recipe for these so an austere plus a tropical gives you an exotic um and it's 12 percent chance so it's reasonably easy to get the exotic bee i didn't have any trouble with that at all the next one after that we'll have a look at in a second we're going to have a look at this lot over here as you can see i've been here about 10 minutes and i've got 14 silky combs so it's a pretty good process this one and at the moment this is my favorite i think my favorite setup for getting getting these bees out of here to keep the processing going because i've got 15 exotic drones in here uh let's look at this again um let's just take one of these out and analyze that i don't need to analyze the queen it's all got this, exactly the same properties as this it's got long life um and it's got normal production that's what's that's why it's going up so fast and this was also diurnal and nocturnal so he's basically runs day and night so that's why he's producing so much comb so what i've got to do now is push this one back into this into here and then i can put the others back over here and put them into this uh, hopper 
and they won't go in because um, until the hopper's out. But what's happening here is that the produce are coming out over here and then they're going down these hopper ducts. So all of the excess that can't go in in here will end up in the hopper ducts going down this way. So they should eventually, when this when this hopper fills up, any excess will go down and fill, go into that chest. Underneath this one here, I've got a bottom side, I've got some more hopper ducts going straight down and that's why they're going to that chest down there. This one here is, yeah, as you've seen already, jungle set up. Now these two, I'm trying to do the endemic bee. So that actually seems to be pretty hard. I was doing this for quite a long time at base and it's got no restrictions on this. Let's have a look. And it, so this one's got endemic. So if we have a look at the uses of this. So an exotic plus a tropical gives you an 8% chance of getting an endemic bee. And an endemic bee, as you may guess, it produces... Let's have a look at the products from this one. So the product is you're getting 30% chance of silky kiln from this one, which is great. Let's go back and have a look at the products from this one, the, the tropical bee. And then you're getting a average drops. I'm sure that that's quite correct. Jungle temples. You can find exotic bees in jungle temples. Uh, tropical bees in jungle temples. Of course, you get the chance of the Valiant Bee coming out in here. Um, hold on a second. Let's just do the uses of that one. We should see it better than that. Right. So, bee breeding. So, you get a 20% chance. So, the next one along this was the Endemic Bee. And the Endemic Bee... Let's go back and see if we can find the Endemic, the endemic Bee. Um, let's go back to uses, this one here. And the uses of this one... It gives you a 20% chance, which is actually strange because this is a higher generation of that. But it gives you something else as well, which it doesn't show you on here. Um, so does it show me in this analyzation? It gives me poison, <laughs> which is actually because of the um, because of the tropical part or the exotic part. Because of this is poison. This is all pure. This is a pure exotic bee that came out of that and this is also a pure exotic bee so those aren't too great for crossbreeding let's have a look at the other at the other comb um hive here what have we got in these three let me just sort my inventory and we should see that better now so this is the one we haven't analyzed this was a pure exotic again this one also this is also pure exotic with no effects um pure exotic and the last one of these is another pure exotic. So I'm not doing very well with this one at the moment. So what we need is another jungle bee here with these two princesses, which we'll just do now. Put one of those in there and one in here. And we need a jungle bee. And the jungle bees are going to be stored where? You know, I'm not sure I've got the jungle bees. But as you can see, the pollution up there is enormous. <laughs> We'll have a look at that downstairs in a second when I'm going to finish doing this. Um, I think the jungle bees might be over here. Let's just check it out. Yeah, I've got 26 tropical bees in this. Let's put those into that. And then we're going to put all of these drones, which because they're all pure exotics. I didn't, I did check, but there wasn't anything special with their properties. So let's go back and put these in here like this. Now that's not. This is not by far the hardest bee. The hardest two bees are the Mona... Oh, Steadfast, I think, is one. Let's put this into here like this. Hopefully we'll get something better out of this and put this one into this one. Let those get on with it. So I'll look at that in a second. While we're, while we're walking down, downstairs and having a look at the um, state of the... state of the diesel engine make sure there's no pollution come out so there's one block of pollution here which is sulfur block and as you can see the stuff is going through there fairly fast so look at the rate of it coming in we should be getting a lot of produce coming in as well yes you can see there's quite a lot coming in here apples have actually gone down I don't see any apples coming through here at all now of course they were jumping around because I'm a bit close and it starts to pull, even though I haven't got any uh, special armour on at the moment to pull it away. 
And there goes another low, uh, there goes another block. block. What have we got in here? 44. It's only done 44. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say anything. Just get out of the way of that. How many has he got to go with another round here? I've got to be very careful, of course, because of this uh, HV cable. Uh, maybe I won't do that. <laughs> Chicken out. <laughs> Oh yes, yeah, so I was going to have a look at the steadfast beer. It's night time, so I'll have a quick sleep. Come back in a second. Right, I was talking about the steadfast beer. Let's have a look at the steadfast beer on here. Um, drones. Now we should be able to see the steadfast beer. It's going to be a purpley one, like demonic. Which one is it? Maybe it's easier. There we go. So if we have a look at the recipe for this one, it doesn't. Oops! I'll try again. Click it off and then do the steadfast beat and have a look at the recipe for that. Only dungeon chests, and I went through a lot of dungeons to find any mine shafts. I haven't found any nether fortresses. I haven't found any nether fortresses yet. Um, stronghold libraries. I found them in there. I found two. So in order to get that up to a decent number we'll have to go back to the other base and have a look at that um, what I'm going to do with this by the way is change it so we'll look at this I think a spring has come upon us now oh <laughs> look goodness now yes good now we're getting the effects of um, pollution <laughs> so let's have a look at that we've got mining fatigue and hunger and I've well, still got the toughness too of course that's caused by the pollution from these blocks <laughs> even though a lot of the pollution is actually going into the uh, it should be going through the trees here and it should also be going what i should normally do here is put yes that's right i put two this one's actually not doing anything as you can see so <laughs> i think it's probably a bit over the top the pollution is in this pack at the moment <laughs> at least for the diesel generator it seems to come out of that chunk I'm going to go and turn it off because I don't want to leave it running just in case something bad happens. See, so this is moving around this block here, but it's, at least it's not going to knock any of the cables off, which is something we discussed last time as well. Turn it off. That gives it a chance to cool down. How much, um, how much power is in these? This will disappear in power because of the that's gotten zero in it, so I'm safe to walk past. Oh, there's an apple. Does that mean it's into spring? Yes, we're in spring, so the apples are now working. <laughs> so what I'm going to say is we, we've got 12 left, 12 left to do. So that, as well for one stack of this, is probably it's a bit much. I can't recommend people use the uh, arc furnace for doing steel. How much power has this got in none? So we can safely walk around that as well. But as you can see, this stuff is just continuous. So that you wouldn't normally expect to see that. And I reckon that that's probably full because on those two there I've got void upgrades as well. So there we are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back. I'll go quickly outside and see if that smog has lifted a bit. Um, hopefully it has. It doesn't take very long for the smog to disappear. As you can see, it's already... No, no, it's still here. We've still got it. But and these plants are going like crazy. And oh, there's an, there's an apple just being harvested. So it's not affecting the trees at all. I'm, I'm glad to see as well. It's affecting the butterflies, as you can see there. <laughs> They've got mining fatigue and hunger as well. Now, hunger's not too bad for me. I don't mind having hunger. So I'm just going back to the other base, and I'll see you in a few seconds. Actually, I picked up a bucket of lubricant on my way back. And you have the three machines you can lubricate, as far as I know. And one of them is the uh, crusher. The other one is the pump jack. So I've got one of these on here like this. And it's got two millibuckets. So let's put in a thousand buckets. So we've got a thousand millibuckets of lubricant in here. You can actually feed it in from the top here. There is a, a hole. I'm just checking out. There. there you've got an input on the top of that. So you can actually put a tank on it. And that will automatically fill that up, or a pipe, or whatever you want. So there's a bit of a 
so that's actually quite useful you can also do the same thing with the pump jack and the excavator now we haven't talked about the excavator i wanted to do that next episode i think but i need a lot of steel for the excavator so we can have a quick look at what we need for that because it's a massive it's a massive machine and in fact it's two parts so excavator here so we have just have a look at this so it, this doesn't seem too bad you go okay that's not too bad six steel scaffolding 15 seat steel sheet metal redstone block of course nine light engineering blocks not too bad five heavy engineering blocks that's all steel of course radiator block not too bad till you turn on to the next page when you've got the wheel <laughs> and the wheel needs 20 steel scaffolding ah, that's not too bad nine blocks of skill steel that's 81 ingots which is basically a good couple of stacks of ingots i don't think i have as many as that yet so what i've got in here i picked up 53 from there when i was finishing off so i've got 64 22 which is uh, 88 which is uh, just not enough to do what i need to do so i'm gonna have to get another stack of that stuff processing and put up with the pollution <laughs> until, it, until it goes away so what i was saying is i wanted to over here something i learned from danny's son's last episode is the serene season's greenhouse glass and the serene season, the serene season's greenhouse glass is very expensive as it happens it sort of takes a lot of a lot of glass to get this a lot of um cactus green and a lot of lapis lazuli and it did not have to, oh it's not me that's done it on that good um that so i've basically covered the whole area of this so it's not affected by seasons so what i was going to do is to replace the apple trees with potatoes over there um, by the diesel engine so we've got a better source of power and if you actually have a look at all the uses of potatoes let's do that while i'm thinking about it oops no, i forget to actually click off that before i trust the u button don't i here's the button so if we go back here to the fermenter now we want the, is it the fermenter no we want the industrial fermenter that's what we need this is the one that produces so one potato will produce 80, 80 millibuckets of ethanol that's the same as an apple so it's the ethanol is the one that's actually we would be short of to keep that process running continuously as you saw the seeds were no problem whatsoever and of course the industrial hemp was no problem to get a lot of that right back to the bees and you end up with some strange combinations sometimes um and the one i've ended up with i was trying to do some crossbreeding and I wanted to take the attributes of the gone the wrong way of the um, industrial bee, which I've got in here. So an industrial boat bee. That's the standard one I think I'm using at the moment. So look at that one. So this is oh, actually no, that's the new one. Because if you look at the bottom of it, it's got beautific as an as a thing. So it's got also this one's not so great because it's got um, it's lost its nocturnal activities. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, let's push that back into there. I'm looking. I was looking for the standard B. I think this, no. Uh, I think this is the standard one I'm using at the moment. Yeah, this is industrious one it's got two it's got fast pollination is what i wanted it for its production is slower which is a shame but it's got these properties dernal to kernel and cave dwelling so it's a great one for um tree breeding and i've done a lot of tree breeding as well so let's just put that back into this just like this um and the one that's in here at the moment is not there anymore <laughs> I've got them all finished off as it happens. I've just got some herm hermatic. And these are actually a tough one as well. Let's have a look at these. So let's first of all have a look at, and they're not analysed yet. I'll analyse the princess this time. So it's got a longer lifespan, which is best. Almost the longest. Longest is the longest. Longer is the next one after that. It's got the fastest pollination. It eats wheat and it produces four offspring and its effect is repulsion. Repulsion basically repulses mobs. And it's also got the, the it's got nice climate properties, nice humidity properties, and it's both night 
update and uh, cave dwelling so you can put that underneath trees and whatever else so it's actually a very good one for for breeding um anything so what i've done is i've got another i've got my sixth uh, alvary here so let's get put this put these into that and let it get on with its business and that i haven't got any automation on this yet uh what flower does it need wheat i should have wheat let's have a look yeah it's got it's got wheat there's some wheat around here and it's got enough range to do that so that'll work away day and night now and produce me some uh, of this comb so the mellow comb so let's look at the use of the mellow comb very centrifuge yet you basically get nether quartz out of this one so that's a good chance of getting some reasonable nether quartz and that's anything to do with another producing it in base is a good thing <laughs> because the nether is a dangerous place and you can see the these bees flying over to the wheat that's in this field here to so basically, oh, you can see a good, good range actually, even though it's right the way here, you can see how far away they're reaching. And I was talking about Steadfast Bee. Right, Steadfast Bee, what you do, oh, let's go and have a look at this bit as well. I haven't shown you this yet. As you may have noticed in the previous, I had a whole lot of um, chests. Well, they're not chests, are they? These um, Apris chests. And I've organised them all here. Let's just turn it up onto this one over here. Just turn it up here. So you can see the types of bees I've got here. I've got the the merry bee. So we can probably reach that one. Yes, we can. So that's a, a reasonably full chest. It was much easier to get the merry bee than it was to get the uh, tipsy bee. The tipsy bee was actually really hard to get. Rural bee. We've done that before. And the next generation of that is the farmerly. Farm, farmerly. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot more than that. They're just one showing up here. And this one is the one that's hard, as you can see, the Steadfast Bee. Let's just pick one I've actually got. That's Steadfast Industrious. So what I did with this one is I took the Industrious Bee that I've got. Because the Industrious Bee is in here. Let's have a look. Imperial Industrious Bees. Let's analyse this print. It's already analysed. That's good to me. I don't have to use up another any more honey you need a lot of honey for doing this as well by the way tons of honey so this one's um what had four so it's half bred this one so it has four offspring and nope it's actually not a very good one this one it's not the one i would have used before let's put this back again the standard one was these and i've got 64 of these lots of 64s as you can see let's just take the first one i think it's this one um Oh, is that? Yes, this is the one I did. So it had fast pollination, it has four fertility and average. So this is a good one and shortest life, but it didn't have any special properties down here. So I used this bee with the steadfast. I found two steadfast in a stronghold um, library. Let's try again. Oh, by the way, you need to right click the new signs. They're pretty good actually. Happens. I just appeared somewhere else. It doesn't obviously been analysed before. Signs, you just right click them and you can clear and you can clear and shift it so you can basically shift the text. Uh, it's quite nice, I quite like that, pretty good. Signs, so I basically got through all of these bees in here like this. So let's go back to the steadfast bee. Where has it gone to? These two are the hardest. This one, you can only get the monastic. If you look at the use of the monastic bee here or the recipe for it. Stronghold libraries again. I did find one in a stronghold, but you can do some villager trading for this one. Um, and it tells you what you get. It's so basically 10 emeralds or 12 ender pearls. I haven't found anything like 12, 10. And eyes of ender would have been great because I've got stacks of those. Emeralds, I've got a few, but the one I found was 20, 21 emeralds with a, with a princess to get a monastic drone so i went to the village and got three of those so i used a big stack of emeralds but i was going to using the emeralds for other things so the village of tradings in here you can oh mob props oh i haven't seen this one yet where does the evoker come from i have to find the evoker that would be a good one <laughs> mm, that's different didn't expect that totem of the undying it's a minecraft oh maybe this is a Killed by the player, so it's an effect by looting, affected by looting and killed by a player. So I have to kill these guys, either with the um, uh, the 
which one is it now? Mob mob utilities, and that'll give me that. You can get that one. Uh, but I wanted to have a look at the recipe for emeralds, don't we? So we can actually have a look at recipe for mob drops. There's more mob drops in this one. Village of trades is what I'm looking for. Here we go. So you can find a farm and you can trade all sorts of stuff. So that's why I'm actually growing those products over there. Fisherman, you can use it for string and coal. And I've got stacks of both of those. Shepherds, we can use wool. So after you're on a Fletcher, we can use string. All of these things you get a lot of. So library, you can use paper. That's also uh, something that's pretty useful too. So you, basically what I did is I traded one. I found one and traded two more. That's how I did it. And then I combined these with the um, industrious bee that were the four offspring. And after a lot of hard work, oh, as you can see, there's a few bees in these chests, aren't there? In fact, the 64s don't really matter very much because they're done automatically by the Alvarez. But all of the other ones, this wasn't too bad, as you can see. There's not that many bees which are non... As you, um, not the sort of standard bee, which are the ones you do manually. And the same with the steadfast. That wasn't actually too bad. That was surprisingly easy. In fact, I only used one stead of the two drones I found. I only used one of them to do that. Um, so look at the trees. It's night time. We're going to have another quick sleep and come back because I know the episode's running on a bit. I'll see you in a few seconds. In this chest here, I've got most of the types of bees now. There aren't uh, trees, I mean. There's not very many. This one here is the last one I need to get this now there's a couple more one i'm gonna have a lot of difficulty with so let's have a look at forestry saplings it is um plum sapling no which one is it this one the coast to quirt sapling not too bad we should be able to do that we can breed that mundane light surprisingly i haven't got one already but it's a five percent chance it's this one <laughs> the giant sequoia sapling no recipes for it and the only way you can get this one, as far as I believe, is to um, go to the um, trade it with a village and get some um, some pollinate pollen. That's it. Ah, but it's a massive. Let's have a look at that. Um, did it actually tell me what the? No, it doesn't tell me. I've seen it somewhere. You can find it out. I look at the use of that one. No, it only gives you this one. And it, oh, it's here we go. Shift. So if you look at that, it says the girth is 4x4. Four four. So that means you need 16. The height is gigantic. That'll be fun. I look forward to getting this one. That actually happens when you get that. But I've got to find the I've got to find a village yet, and I haven't found one of those. I've been through a few villages. I found a good one just recently. Let's have a look in here. So we've got three. I need to wait for the next one. Veng or Venga pollen. This is actually coming from this tree here. It's a fairly decent tree as it happens. It's got a it gives you quite a few saplings, no big deal. And here is the the balsa, the balsa, and the balsa and the that one. If we look at the uses, I should probably be able to do this actually. Um, let's have a look at the uses of this one. This was the recipe for this one here. Recipe for that one. So balsa, balsa venga will give us this. So what I normally do is I wait to look at the fourth one of these, like that. Now it might be a good idea because at the moment what I'm running in here is industrial, industrial princesses. If I go and move this one and go and get the one that I just saw, so I'll do it in a second. I'll come back in a second when I've got it. It was the hematic bee. So the hematic bee, if you remember, right, it was this one here, the queen, and we could put the queen and the drone together now, and it should carry on producing. Oh, wheat. Have we got wheat? No, we've got wheat in the air. Good. Of course we have. Looks over there. It's going, going all that way for it. Great. Um, the other one I've got, which has got a lot of bees in it, was this one. Um, secluded dr drone. And that was also fast. And it's got cactus. Um, and it's also the fastest pollination. Pollination, but it's slower production. I haven't found any with decent um, production yet. But this was another one of the ones which is a a good bee and this one here must be for that came from the monastic plus the austere bee gave the secluded bee uh then there's no restrictions in here sometimes there are restrictions in this if i actually go back actually look at that again in fact if i move it down to here it tells you the mutations which will give you the hematic drone like this 
possible specialities and then it tells you all about the, the beekeeping 101 stuff of it let's go back and analyze that again um find the recipe for this it was the recipe it was the uses of the austere bee that actually gave something i thought it was nope i'm wrong if you've got square brackets around the number here what it basically means is that you it has a special property so for example i can't do the tipsy bee unless i'm going to get one it's going to get one i'll see you in a sec when i'm there right here as you can see so it gives you these special properties here so it tells you between december the 27th and in fact it wasn't it was the 28th and the 2nd of january inclusive you can get the tipsy bee um, it doesn't tell you much about it in this particular case it says it's night and day and these two aren't so it's a good bee to have because uh, it will produce a lot of um, the frozen comb which basically means snowballs and the rest of it so put the tipsy bee over here like that and let's put the secluded bee back in, uh where's the secluded bee gone to there let's just clear that one out and you see that went into this slot here so there's 12 of those already in there but of course there's lots in that hive at the back there i didn't show you as it happens in fact i don't think there are very many more species of bee that i haven't got there's probably a few demonic bee is a great one because the uses of that one was glowstone and i think i showed you the glowstone last time 15 percent chance for almost a double stack uh, of that and the other one that's quite useful is the um one i'm doing at the moment which is the what's it called now the one that produces the ash let's get one of those out and then have a look at the use uh, the recipe for that one because i've forgotten already bee products the fiendish bee that's the one so you get a 15 percent chance of that one and this one here doesn't tell you what it doesn't tell you anything about it, it says nether as an air, as an biome which is good it's a dernal nocturnal so that's basically right of course all the nether bees have day and night because they can only have day and night because there's no day and no night uh, in that so with this ash uses of the ash we can actually make these bricks these ash bricks they look pretty decent I, I, you might have noticed in the base i have those um, starting to cover up the wall do some of the walls with them well that's it for this episode it's a bit of a different episode than normal i'm trying to explain things which are not the easiest of things to explain um so it's a bit of a bitty one i do hope i hope you've enjoyed it anyway so until next time which we will be doing some uh, i hope that is i've managed to get enough steel prepared the excavator so until then bye for now <laughs>